Hello, Professor Rex here. I'm a tenured accounting professor, and my students and I talk a lot about stock analysis because we like to use the accounting information we learn in class to pick stocks. And to do stock analysis, you likely need to include the current stock price in your analysis, often in Excel, as we see here. So I'll show you how in just a second, along with some critical errors to avoid. But first, let's look at the stock data you can download. So in my investment analysis spreadsheet shown here, I've got one workbook dedicated to downloading live stock quote information. 3,700 stocks, ETFs, and mutual funds, in fact. And Excel downloads them all within seconds. By the way, did you know that you can highlight multiple cells and in the lower right, you can get information like average, count, and sum? So let me just show you really quick. I'm gonna highlight some stock prices. And down here, it tells you the average, the count, there's eight of them, and then the sum. And then if you click over here, if I click over here on the ticker symbol column, select the whole column, down here it shows a count of 3,759 ticker symbols and stock quotes. So everything here is information that you can choose to have Excel import into your spreadsheet. Besides stock price, you can import other data like percentage change, the extended trading hours price and percentage change, the expense ratio for mutual funds and ETFs, but none of these shown are mutual funds or ETFs, so it's not showing you the expense ratio. It also shows you the beta, but only for stocks. And even the company information like the headquarters and the description of what the company does and all this data is automatically updated whenever you open your spreadsheet there are even more data fields that you can import and we'll see what some of those are in a little bit so i'm going to switch over to my spreadsheet where i'm going to show you how to do the stock quotes what we are looking at here on the left are the names and ticker symbols of several stocks, ETFs, mutual funds, and closed-in funds, along with their current price. Now, this is just data that I copied from finance.yahoo.com, so we can double-check the accuracy of Excel's imported data. This is an optional step, but it's really critical that you double-check that the, uh, this stock quote information feature from Excel is going to work right. It doesn't always work right because it occasionally guesses the wrong stock, but it's easy to fix. So I've created a column called stocks, enter symbols in this column. And I've included the uh, enter symbols in this column because later we'll see it's easy to forget which column to enter the ticker symbols. Then down below, I'm going to type these ticker symbols like Microsoft, NVIDIA, etc. And I'll uh, do Home Depot later to show you how to add it to our list when you need to add more. Next, I highlight the ticker symbols. And then up here, I'm going to go to data. So you're probably on home. So click on data and then click on stocks. Now there's a warning here. The stocks data type is only available to Microsoft 365 accounts or those with a free Microsoft account. You must also have the English, French, German, Italian, Spanish, or Portuguese editing language added to the office language preferences. So I'm going to click on again data and then stocks. And now what it's going to do is Microsoft's going to go to the web and try to guess which um, stock these tickers are associated with. And it usually gets them all right. We will see that there's at least one error in here. And I purposely chose one that's going to give you an error so you know how to fix it. So notice that the information that Excel imports is the company name. And in parentheses, we have the shortened version of the stock exchange. XNAS stands for NASDAQ. And then we have the colon and then the ticker symbol. 
So to fill in, to fill in the ticker symbol over here in the ticker symbol column, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these cells, and then notice we have a little pop-up icon with a plus sign on it. I'm going to click on the plus sign, and then here's all the data we can insert. So I want the ticker symbol, so I'm going to scroll down to ticker symbol. I guess it's, it's going to be off my screen so you can't see it. And there's the ticker symbol. Next, I'm going to go to, well, next I want to add the current price. So to do that, don't click over here in the current price column. Again, we have these highlighted. And then if I click on this plus icon and go down to price, it will add the price to the next available column. Now I want to stop here to double check that all of our information is correct. So notice Microsoft 346, 87 matches here, 455 matches, 129.96. Again, this data is just information from finance.yahoo.com, just so I can double check accuracy. So everything looks good until I get down to ticker BG. We've got a huge problem. It should be a current price of 105.59, but Microsoft says it's only five cents. And then notice, it guessed the wrong company. Microsoft Excel picked Big Gold when it should be Bungie Limited. So to fix that, I'm going to click here, and then I'm just going to type BG and then a whole lot of other Gs to confuse Microsoft. Click Enter. Now notice it has a question mark. So then I'm going to click on the question. See the question mark? Make sure my cursor is not in the way. I'm going to click on the question mark. I'm going to get over here in the data selector. I'm going to choose BG, and then it's going to be show me all the guesses that it has, and I get to select the correct one. So it had selected Big Gold, which is a Canadian national stock exchange. I did not want this. I wanted Bungie Limited, which trades on the New York Stock Exchange. So I can either click here or click on Select. And now let's scroll back over. Now the name matches and the stock price matches. So everything looks good. Let's check these other ones. 452, that works. 415.52 and 12.53. Now I'm going to fill in the other columns. So remember to include or to insert percentage change here. I don't click here. I click on the column that says enter ticker symbols here. So I'm going to click on, I'm going to highlight these, and then to the little pop-up plus icon, I'm going to click on that, and I want to choose percentage change. Let's see, where's percentage, oh, here we go, change percentage, and then notice these are actually not listed as a percentage, they're listed as a dollar format because it guessed wrong. So I want to change that to the percentage so I can go to home and click on percentage. And I want to increase that one decimal. And then for instrument type, I go back over here again, select this, click on the plus. I'm going to go scroll down to instrument type. That will tell us if it's a stock or like an ETF or a mutual fund. And then for expense ratio, now this should only fill in uh, data for these three ETFs. I'm going to go up here to expense ratio. And you can see that two of these funds are very cheap. And then this NFJ is, has a much higher expense ratio. And then to add price for extended hours, I'm going to click here. Price extended hours. Let's see where that's at. Down here, you can't quite see it. It says price extended hours, and I want change percentage in extended hours. I'm going to, let's see, it's under change percentage extended hours. And then for description, will be the last one. 
and I'm going to choose description. And notice it does not give a description for the funds. These happen to be two ETFs and a closed end fund. Now this is getting a little bit messy and I want to be able to sort it. So I'm going to change it into a table. To do that, I'm going to select all the data here. And then I can go up here to do insert table. But what I like to do is control T. And it's going to say, uh, where is the data? I've already selected it. Does my table has headers? I'm going to select yes. And then I can change the widths of these so that we can see more information. Now, of course, I could have chosen multiple columns and just double click. Double click here, but that assumes I want it to be the widest, but I like it like this. All right, so there we go. Now, another thing I like to do is I like to use this table as a lookup table. In other words, other parts of my spreadsheet, I like to have it use a VLOOKUP and go over here to this table to look up the current price. But to do that, the ticker symbol needs to be on the far right. So I'm going to, excuse me, the far left of the column. I'm going to select the whole column. I'm going to do control X. And then I'm going to select the first column. I'm going to right click and insert cut cells. And now I can sort these by ticker symbol. And then other parts of my spreadsheet can use a VLOOKUP. It will look up the ticker symbol here, and then we'll go over to whatever column I ask it to, and it will retrieve that information. But now I want to show you one more thing before we get to Microsoft's tips. I want to show you how to add one to the bottom of the table. So notice I want to have Home Depot. So I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to type in HD, which is the ticker symbol. I'm going to hit Enter, and then I can sort this so that when I use VLOOKUP, it will uh, work correctly. So now some tips from Microsoft. To see all the fields available for a company or fund, you click the little, you click this little house. I don't think it's a house. I'm, it has some columns. Anyway, a building icon. You click that or you press Control Shift F5. Control Shift F5, and then it pops up the Apple card, shows you all the information that you can import. Another tip, if you see the little question mark icon, which is what we saw earlier. So in other words, let's say I'm going to type in some gibberish Let's see, I'm going to type in VFINX and then a whole bunch of other X's. It's going to get confused. So if you see the um, question mark like we showed earlier, you're just going to click on this. And the data selector is going to pop open. You can correct the ticker symbol, hit enter. And I'm going to select this mutual fund, VFINX, which is the S&P 500. All right, another tip from uh, Microsoft says you can also write formulas that reference data types or use the stock history function. And lastly, it says stock information is delayed. So it might be like 20 minutes delayed. Now the market right now is closed. That's why my stock quotes matched up perfectly. And it's not for trading purposes or advice. It says see about our data sources for more information. So there you have it. That's how you can import stock data and other information or stock prices and other information about the stocks and mutual funds into Excel automatically. So if there are any other investment related videos you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll make a video. And of course, be sure to subscribe if you want to see future videos. I will probably start doing more investment related videos instead of so many accounting related videos. See you later.